you had the people do a uh, exercise, right? Which was like three sets of 10, I think. It depends a little bit on the exercise, but yes, for the upper body, it was three sets of 10. Three sets of 10. Uh, how many, I mean, how hard did you make that exercise? Um, you know, was the, was the effort, was the intention to make it to go to failure? Uh, no. So it was, uh, so it was still uh, volatile fatigue. So basically the subjects were allowed to stop whenever they want. But of course, uh, we kind of asked them, hey, try to go pretty intense. Uh, and then we say like, maybe keep like one rep in the tank and then maybe the last set of the exercise, give it all you got. Now, then in practice, it entirely depends on the subject. But some subjects I'm like, this one probably had on average two, maybe even three sets, uh, three reps in reserve at the end of a set. Some uh, some subjects hit failure in almost every set, even though we said like, oh, you don't have to <laughs> grind out everything. So it depends a little bit on the individual, but I would say on average, most sets they have one uh, one repetition in reserve until they would hit failure. So the goal of the exercise was just to do a stimulating training session. And these were all individuals that were uh, habitually active. So all of them did some kind of exercise one, two, three times a week, but none of them did uh, structured resistance exercise. That was an exclusion criteria. So they didn't have to go to failure every set to get like a training stimuli. For all of them, this would be a pretty challenging workout simply because their body wasn't used to uh, resistance exercise before. So I would say just the, the workout for anyone who goes to a gym is like, okay, it's a whole body workout, pretty close to failure. It's not easy, but it's nothing special. Um, but for someone who is relatively untrained, uh, at least in resistance exercise, this would be uh, a substantial um, a substantial challenge slash stimuli. Okay, jumping it, jumping ahead a little bit on my thoughts. So, do you think that it would it would make a difference if a person was trained, like so they go every week, and would would have they would they have had a different response? Yeah. So, one of the so, for example, we we previously discussed. Do I think the type of protein would make any impact? And I, I would, again, I the general concept, not at all. Mm. Uh, the one variable where I don't know how much, if any, impact it would make, it is the exercise slash the training status of the subject. So if I begin with, what if we had done no exercise at all? Um, there is some suggestion in the literature that you can give a lot of protein, but that at least your muscles are not really going to utilize like you see the increase in muscle protein synthesis, but even, uh, so there's a, a famous study where they infused amino acids. So at a, just let's call it 24 seven amino acids are coming in, but at a certain time point, muscle protein synthesis just drops back down to basal rates, to fasted rates. Uh, and that study kind of suggests that at some point your muscles are just done with building muscle tissue. Um, but that study was done in, without any exercise. So based on that, it is possible that your body, when it first gets amino acids, things like, okay, let's stimulate some anabolism. But at some point that it says like, why would I build more muscle? It's just um, metabolically expensive to build all this muscle tissue and I really have no physical activity stimulus that requires me to have this. So let's just stop doing it. And that only in the context of exercise that your body says, yeah, the biggest challenge I see is surviving this physical challenge. Let's keep growing. So I'm not 100% convinced that if I did the exact same study without any exercise, where you would also see that concept that with a single meal, muscle protein synthesis can stay elevated for over 12 hours. I don't know. Like, I'm not saying it's not. I just don't know. Then uh, to your question, what if it's in subjects who do train regularly? Uh, so on one hand, you can uh, speculate. 
the more trained you are, the smaller the exercise stimuli would be. Like we mm -hmm. all know if you start training in the beginning, you make the best gains and it becomes less, less, less and less. Um, so the need for additional protein seems to become less. Um, so you could speculate the more trained you are, maybe at some point you're not going to be able to build in all the protein you have. However, if you look at the research on this, it's not that clear. Like there's only one or two uh, studies who looked into it and you don't really see that the muscle protein synthesis response to exercise becomes shorter in trained people. A lot of people seem to think this is because there are quite some studies on the subject, but th those looked at muscle protein synthesis and muscle protein synthesis is uh, the synthesis of any muscle protein, whether it's collagen, mitochondria, um, connective tissue, can be any type of protein. But what seems to happen is when you're more trained, your total muscle protein synthesis response becomes a lot less and shorter. But that is because you're starting to build less of those, let's call it weird proteins. You're not going to build... Uh, uh, your mitochondria are just not going to respond as much anymore, but your myofibular protein will continue to respond similar as in an untrained people. So myofibular are the big proteins that contract and produce force. So it seems that the more trained you are, um, your body becomes more refined. When you're untrained, every protein in your muscle is, I don't know what's going on. We need to adapt to this. But then you only need a certain amount of mitochondria, a certain amount of connective tissue. And after that, your body is like, okay, we got enough of that to survive resistance exercise. So whenever there's a new challenge, we only build those myofibular proteins. And it's just not clear that that effect becomes shorter. So do you have a good answer? No. Um, it is certainly possible that the more trained you are, that the effect that I see here is that your body just says, yes, more protein give it to me, uh, that that would, that effect would just be less, but it's just not clear from the literature. So honestly, it's pure speculation uh, on anyone's side, so to speak. In today's demanding world, maintaining energy and a sense of vitality can feel challenging. Prioritizing self-care is crucial for optimizing your performance and well-being across all aspects of life. What can you do to take better care of yourself? Magnesium Breakthrough is an all-natural supplement designed to address the root causes of fatigue and support a holistic approach to health. This unique formula helps to reduce fatigue, improve sleep, and even strengthens muscle and supports your heart and brain health. Unlike traditional magnesium supplements, Magnesium Breakthrough leverages a full-spectrum formula comprising all seven essential types of magnesium, ensuring optimal absorption and efficacy. Ready to experience the difference? Visit bioptimizers.com modern and claim your 10% discount with code MODERN10. In addition to the discount, you get gifts of up to two travel-sized bottles of Magnesium Breakthrough with each purchase. And it comes with the Bioptimizer 365-day money-back guarantee. Right. So you said shorter, uh, I mean, as opposed to more, I mean, quicker, I guess. So I assume that there's some window after you've exercised, during which time the muscle says, okay, I need to build. And then after that, it says, okay, I'm rested. So do you know what that window is? And does it change with age? Uh, yeah. So... Um, we know that at least in healthy young adults, the window is at least 24 hours. So we know mm -hmm. that uh, at least 24 hours after exercise, if you give additional protein, um, you make very good use of that protein. Just a higher percentage of that protein ends up in muscle tissue than if you would consume it without any prior exercise the day before. After that has not been studied, my guess is that it would still apply to some extent because we do know, depending on how challenging the exercise stimuli is, that muscle protein synthesis can be elevated up to 72 hours. Um, so my guess is that just as how long the muscle protein synthetic responses to a training uh, session, that's how long there's an increased sensitivity to effectively utilize the 
protein that you consume. Now, an important uh, detail there is that is most likely just because I uh, say that muscle protein synthesis can be stimulated for up to 72 hours, doesn't mean that that third day muscle protein synthesis is elevated just as much as the first day. So it's likely that the first day muscle protein synthesis is the highest and then it just drops off a little bit in the next 24 hours. Then the next 24 hours, it drops off even more. And then probably the fourth day, it's pretty much back to normal. So that would suggest that probably the synergy between exercise and protein is the highest the first day. Um, some people believe it's like the first hour after exercise, you need to have a post-workout shake. That doesn't really seem to be true because it, like, it's not like you do exercise and instantly your muscle protein synthesis is sky high. It also needs to ramp up a little bit. But probably the first day, the synergy is um, the best. Now, with older adults, they have something called um, anabolic resistance, which means that any type of anabolic stimuli, which is mostly protein ingestion or resistance exercise, anything that would stimulate anabolism, um, just is less effective in them. Um, so in older adults with resistance training, you can absolutely still stimulate muscle protein synthesis and build muscle tissue. It's just a little bit more difficult than in younger adults. So my guess is that just the overall response in elderly, there's a little bit of a downward sh shift. So I still think the first 24 hours, the response is the biggest. It's just a little bit lower. Next day, a little bit lower. And because the uh, third day is also a little bit lower, maybe it's already back to basal levels on the third day. But in general, it's the same concept. But because everything is just a little bit lower, it will be back to basal levels a little bit sooner, probably. But again, the main variable there is not your age per se. It's more how big is the training stimuli uh, compared to your your body's level, for example. So if you have an older adult who goes to the gym for the first time and does a pretty intense workout, his muscle protein synthesis response is going to be much bigger than a bodybuilder who maybe does a lot more weight and even a lot more sets. But for him, it's only a small increase compared to his training last week. So the relative challenge is a bigger predictor of um, the adaptive response than the training stimuli or your age per se. In terms of the levers that move the amount of MPS, so you talked about diet, like the amount of the protein being available and the exercise. So how relatively, how important are those two? Uh, it depends a little bit how you look at it. So mm -hmm. uh, a simple example is without consuming protein, you simply cannot build muscle or any protein in your body. Um, so let's say I take you, Richard, and I inject you with all the testosterone in the world, and I let you train as much as you want, but at least one hour a day, but I don't allow you to consume protein. You simply cannot gain either muscle mass or lean body mass, because where are those building blocks coming from? Like the best you can hope for is that you don't break anything down that you don't lose anything but the building blocks have to come from somewhere so you always need to consume some protein to be in an anabolic state having said that in practice of course anyone gets protein and you don't need that much to at least have something available for net growth so in practice uh, resistance training is by far the most potent thing you can do in fact when you look at studies uh, protein intake on its own in individuals that don't do strength training it's not that clear that protein on its own even helps build muscle mass and maybe it can attenuate muscle loss a little bit but it's not like a super effective strategy for example um, but once you add exercise in the mix exercise clearly stimulates lean body mass gains uh, but protein on top of exercise improves that response. So it's really synergy. Um, if I have to say, if I have to pick one, I would say, well, exercise is the more important thing. Um, 
because it does a lot more than just build up your muscle protein, for example. Um, but again, you really need both. But if I have to pick one, which is more important, let's put it differently. If someone would do 10% more or better training, that would make a lot bigger difference than consuming 10% more protein.